Australia has a constitutional mandate for fair elections. As it is, it's only fair for candidates who are Republicans and Democrats. So we invited a senator to come speak to us tonight who has introduced legislation to make our elections fair. Um, this is bipartisan legislation. Uh, one of the, the co-sponsors of this legislation is our local Senator Lisa Boscola. But the man who introduced the legislation has um, agreed to come speak to us. And he's not, his district is like 100 miles away from here. So we're especially grateful to our speaker, Senator Mike Fulmer. Very much. Uh, actually, I have to commend you all here this evening. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm quite impressed on a showing on a Friday evening. Uh, shows that you folks are awake. And a real quick story: back in 2006, when I was first elected to the state senate, I ran in a primary. Which, quite honestly, folks, if someone would have told me uh, seven years ago, or actually, it's going on eight years ago now that I'd be talking before you good people as a state senator, I would be wondering what you were smoking and could I have some? Uh, but uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to get any trouble. <laughs> Maybe a marble. I don't know. Uh, how did Mike Fulmer get elected to the state senate? And, and this is going to lead into my legislation on Senate Bill 195, which is the Booker's Choice Act. As, who remembers the infamous pay raise? Oh, yeah. Midnight pay raise. All right. Back in 2005, myself and three other, um, as we were then known as certifiables, um, organized an organization called the Constitutional Organization of then Lebanon, but it's now Liberty. We're now officially a statewide organization. We're a 501c3. But back in 2005, we started an organization. The reason we started COOL, which is the Constitutional Organization of Liberty, was because we saw that there was a void in the people's understandings of our own constitutional rights. That this document, which I carry with me anywhere, everywhere I go, I never leave home without one. And this one has a copy of the state constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the US Constitution all in one handy dandy easy to carry, easy to reference, and mine was personally signed by Ron Paul, so I just want to smell that stuff. I endorsed it down Philadelphia, and uh, Ron was good enough to, to sign mine. But anyway, we saw this, and, and when the pay raise came about, what really irritated us about the pay raise was that we saw it as a true violation of Article 2, Section 8 of our state constitution. And if you read Article 2, Section 8 of our state constitution, it basically says the members of the General Assembly shall receive such salary and mileage uh, for session and special sessions and no other compensation whatsoever, whether for service upon committee or otherwise, and no member of the General Assembly shall receive any increase of salary and mileage in that term. What happened was they did this, not only did they do this pay raise, but they took an unvouchered expense, which we saw in direct violation of our own state constitution, in which later on, and much later on, this US, the state Supreme Court finally got it right, in, in saying so. Anyway, our group went out to look for somebody to run, but the person that you were running against was a, well, he was Senate Majority Leader, 24-year incumbent, well entrenched, had a lot of money, political machine, the whole bit. I didn't want to run. I got volunteered. <laughs> so I got kind of drafted in the whole thing. But what we found out was this. We knocked on over 13,000 doors in that primary, and um, we, we found out that people were angry. And the reason I'm bringing that up, and the reason I'm going to commend you all for being here this evening, is that we woke up that day, that year, and we said we weren't going to take it any longer. There's no way that a Mike Fulmer, with no political machinery, with no money, defeats a Senate Majority Leader unless the people were awake and they were upset. My point to you is this. I'm impressed with your turnout here this evening. It's a Friday night. And you're here because you're worried about your country, you're worried about your state, that you're awake, and that we're concerned about our freedoms being eroded on a daily basis. Yeah. 
and we need to stay awake. And they're being eroded in such a subtle, subtle, subtle way with neat terms like the Patriot Act and, and National Defense Authorization Acts and so forth. Well, the reason I introduced Senate Bill 195, which I introduced the first time that my, in, in the first session that I, when I was first elected back in 2006, 2007, the 2006, 2008 session was because, and as the, the gentleman who introduced me so pointedly point, pointed out, we were supposed to have equal access to the ballots to, to Pennsylvania. And as the system is presently stated, uh, is, is written, here's what happens. And this is going to happen next year in 2014, by the way. So if an independent or third party candidate is going to try to get on a statewide election ballot, on, on the ballot on a statewide election, because of Kathleen Kane's three million plus votes that she received, they're probably, you're probably going to need an excess of 60,000 signatures to get on the ballot. Now here's what happens to those people. They go out, and let's say they do get this 64,000 plus or maybe 66,000 signatures, and they go out there and they do that. Well, depending on what party it is, for instance, if, the, if it's a libertarian candidate, the Republicans are going to go after them. If it's a Green Party candidate, the Democrats are going to go after them. And they put an army of attorneys up against them, and it takes so much money to defend that, that, that right to be on the ballot. I find that extremely unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Extremely unconstitutional. Here's what Senate Bill 195 does. I should have brought a copy here, and, um, and I didn't. I apologize. But basically what the, the bill does is it basically creates equal access to the ballot. If you're a Republican or Democrat to get on a statewide ballot, you need 2,000 signatures. This would make, if you're an independent or third party candidate, you need 2,000 signatures. Uh, and, it, and it breaks down to the state senate races, house of representative races, and so forth and so forth. Um, and that's basically, but it also makes it easier for third party, uh, third parties to be established and recognized as, as parties. Because I'm going to throw a question out to you all tonight. And I'm a Republican, so I'm, I'm not here to bash Republicans. I'm, I'm not. But I want to ask you this question. If I'm a third party or independent, why are my tax dollars going to pay for the Republican and Democratic primaries? Uh, I mean, that's, that's all I'm why are our tax dollars being paid for their conventions? I have no problem if you want to have a convention. I have no problem for Republicans to have a primary. I have no problem for Democrats to have a primary. Is the primary constitutional? Well, there's a good question. There's, 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 there's a great question. And, then, and here's what we do in the primary elections. It really concerns me that we put important issues in primary election issues. The, the general election is what really matters, folks. The primary elections are purely about parties picking their candidates to represent them in an upcoming election. It's the general election that means everything. There's where referendums should be put. There's where all those issues should be put. They should never be put into a primary election cycle. We kind of evolved ourselves into this. And I just, what I wanted to do was this. The bill was not originated by me. I did not uh, create electricity. I copied the state of Delaware and brought it a little bit west, or northwest. I guess <laughs> Delaware's to the southeast of us. But anyway, uh, it works in Delaware. Now here's some of the complaints I hear. Well, Mike, uh, how fair is it that the Republican candidate has to go to all Republicans and the Democrat candidate can, can goes to all it has to go to just Democrats. But the independent and third party, they'll be able to go to anybody. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you this, and I know this because I, I went through the process. Imagine being an independent candidate going to a Republican or Democrat door and saying, hey, would you sign my petition to get on the ballot? No, I ask you what party you are. It's not easy. And, the, and here's the other thing. When you look at the registration difference between the Republicans and the Democrats versus the third party and independent people, it is astronomical. It is huge. Now, the boys at the top, and the boys and girls at the top of both parties dislike my bill. And they do not like it 
and I don't understand why. Well, I have some <laughs> ideas why, but my what what I don't understand is that as if you're an incumbent, and I'll be an incumbent in the 2014 uh, upcoming election cycle, and if you have one or more candidates running against you, I can show you statistically that the incumbent wins just about every time. Just about every time. You have to be a murderer or whatever or whatnot. To, we probably have. Uh, and, and even that might get you still in. But the point is, is that um, the, the incumbent wins every time. I think what they're afraid of, folks, is this. Issues. And, and, and the reason why, the second reason why I introduced the bill, besides making it constitutional for, for independents and third parties to get to, the, to the, uh, the, the ballot, I don't believe in open primaries. And I'll tell you why. Open primaries can create a whole bunch of shenanigans going on in, inside and power broken and so forth. And I, I believe if you're a Democrat, be a Democrat. And if you're a Republican, be a Republican. If you want to be, in, so this bill, is the second reason is, is that it will give, I believe, third party candidates and independents at least a feeling that they belong to our electoral process, which is, I believe, constitutional. Now, the third reason is, I want to see more excitement. We talk about, you know, in the presidential election that we would get 50% of the registered voters out to, to vote. We consider that as a great victory. Oh. Folks, how sad is that? It, it, even if it's that high, 50% of registered voters and how many people who should be registered to vote don't register? So you're talking about a very small level. Uh, it's a very small portion of our population that are deciding all these things. I'm hoping by, by doing this that we're going to create some excitement in the electoral process that we'll get some issues. And, and, and whether the third party or independent candidates can win or not, it's going to be an uphill battle as it is. But at least give them fair access to the ballot so that, that we can get this thing going and get people interested. And the other big complaint I hear is, well, Micah, you're going to create ballot clutter. Well, God forbid you have to go into a ballot booth and actually think before you pull the, the lever. I would hate you to think that you just go in there and go, you know, I mean, imagine if you'd had to really, right, imagine if you really had to think before you voted. That would, that would be a terrible thing. In, in all honesty, folks, the resistance to, towards the bill is that We've created an, a, a political process which I don't think our, father, our founding fathers ever meant it to, to, to have. I think we will always, we have no fear from Senate Bill 195. There is no fear here. I can show you in Delaware, they don't have an exorbitant amount of candidates on the ballots. They don't have, they're still there. They didn't fall into the ocean. I mean, the world, the, the sun didn't climb. And, I mean, we were fine. Dogs aren't sleeping with cats. I mean, everything's fine in, in Delaware. And the world did not come to an end. It's, it's, it's A-OK -okay and we'll be fine. And the biggest yard signs I've ever seen. Well, they have great yard signs down there. They're, they're huge. But it must be nice to run in a state that's only like three counties by it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, it must be easy to, but you think they would even have a bunch of candidates, right? Because it would be so easy to run a campaign in Delaware. I mean, 13,000 doors in 2006 was just in the 48th district. That probably would cover half the state. I mean, no, it's bigger than that, but you know, you get my draft. You get my draft. So that's why I introduced the bill. Uh, it's part of my promise to Pennsylvania to go to my website, senatorfalmer.com. You're going to see this thing. That was our platform back in 2006 called the Promise to Pennsylvania. And it's about legal and, and, and uh, political reform, legal reform. Uh, uh, and I'm having a chemo moment right now. I just finished my last chemo treatments, by the way. I'm waiting for my PET scan November 8th to see if I'm totally clean. So, but I, the only side effect I had... <laughs> The, the, the only side effect I've had from that was, was that I, my memory goes sometimes, and then it comes back again as well, like, oh. So, but the point is, uh, promise to Pennsylvania, and, and it's about good government, about openness, transparency, and, and accountability. That's basically what, it's, what it stands for. So now I'm going to close to open to questions. I didn't want to contribute to... Uh, any unnecessary hot air to global warming. Uh, I didn't want to be accused. I have a very low rating from the Sierra Club. They want to know. <laughs> so, yes, sir. And then you're next, sir. Well, Senator Fulmer, 
from the Libertarian Party, we want to thank you for year after year uh, introducing this bill. But uh, I have a question. Yes. Your, your current bill, uh, would it, I'm uh, running for two local offices as a Libertarian. Uh, if this bill would get passed, okay, would it require me to get uh, independence to third parties only? No, you can go to anybody. See, there's where the Republicans and Democrats are upset because the Republicans have to go into the Republicans. But I did that because the registration differences are so huge. But me, I'm telling you, they're huge. You just look at it. You don't, don't take my word for it. Go home and check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. There, there is no fear from this bill. We're not going to, the world will not come to an end, I promise you. The sun will still rise in the east and set in the west. Uh, the gentleman in the back, sir, you, you had your hand up, and then you're next, sir. I got a few questions. Yes. What do we want to do with all the public? Can't hear you. Well, first of all, it was just defeated in one. It, it hasn't been totally defeated. We have the exact same bill, Senate Bill 76, in, in, the, in the Senate, which I'm a co-sponsor of. Uh, actually, I'm a prime co-sponsor of, and I've been working with Senator Dave Argo, who's the prime sponsor, um, to move the bill forward. Um, we built a very solid, solid, and I mean solid, bipartisan coalition in the Senate. Of the 24 co-sponsors, which we only need 26 votes, we have 24 co-sponsors, actually 25. He, Mike Brubaker, the chairman of the Finance Committee, is, is, is all about helping us get this bill done. We don't have the same resistance that, that was over in the House. But let me finish this point. Of the 24 co-sponsors, 13 are Republicans, 11 are Democrats. We have a solid, solid coalition. Um, Senator Lisa Boscola is, 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 has been a great help on, on, on this bill, and, and Senator Pat Brown is, is, is on this bill. And, and we've had help from, from both sides. I, I could give shout outs to all 24, actually, and I, I can't recall all 24, but you can check it out yourself. Uh, what we're trying to do right now is this. The Independent Fiscal Office just came out with their latest review. I haven't had a chance to sit down and look at it yet. We got a commitment from our leadership to give us staff help to go through it, to make sure it is what it says that it is. If there's any tweaks that we need to do, we can do. Now they sent over from the House, Seth Groves, Senate Bill 11, House Bill 1129, I think, 89. is, is 89. the, uh, 1189. 1189, thank you very much. So uh, there's a couple options we can do there. Uh, one, we can continue and tweak uh, Senate Bill 76 and then push for a, a vote out of the committee, which once we fix, there's supposedly, and I, like I said, I haven't seen it yet, a $3 million deficit. Well, last year we were a billion off. That's, that's nothing. We can, we can tweak this thing. We have a couple options. We can tweak it, get it better, or we can gut Seth Groves' bill with an amend the, the new improved version of SB 76 into it, force a four vote on the session floor. I want to separate the wheat from the chaff. I want to separate the, I want to know who's for us and who's against us. So anybody who signed on to that bill, like over in the House, they had 91 co-sponsors and they only had 59 votes on the amendment. Some people have a lot of explaining to do back in their <laughs> districts of why they signed on to a bill and did not support it. I want to know who's for us really. I am tired of 
of, of our legislators going to our leadership, hey, don't run this bill, I don't really want to vote for it, and then going back to their district and going, I am all about it, but we just can't get a vote for it. I want to see it happen. All right? Let the chips fall where they may, but at least we know who's on our side. And this, by the way, is a good bill. It's not perfect, but it's a good bill. And we devised it in such a way to build a bipartisan ship there so that it's not political because I am tired of people being thrown out of their homes because they cannot afford their taxes. That has to end. I'm sorry, I got a little upset. This is, this is, this is about property rights here. This is about property rights. That's right. So, so this, is, this is what I am. <laughs> Folks, I think it's very clear. It, it's, it's very clear. And, and it says, Article 1. By the way, our state constitution is actually very beautiful. And if you get an opportunity, read Article 1 and read, read, read the Article 1 in the various sections. And Article 1, Section 1 is the inherent rights of mankind. By the way, our state constitution was ratified September 28, 1776. So it came out before, before our, our U.S. constitution. Actually, it was used to guide our, our founders as, as we came with ours that came out of 1787 and then was later ratified. Uh, Article 1, Section 1 says that all men are born equally free and independent and have certain inherent and indefeasible rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life and liberty, of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and reputation, and of pursuing their own happiness. How can you, one, acquire, possess, and protect your reputation and your property when you just rent from your school district. So the question is, when we put the bill together and we went through a lot with this bill, we knew that there was a lot of moving parts. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna be honest now, here's the serious side of this. This is, this is where we need to make sure that we have the numbers right because this would be the biggest tax shift in Pennsylvania history. And this is very, very important to make sure we do it right. But we've done this, and, and we're really, really, really close, sir. And we're not done fighting for it yet. So it's not dead. So your bus trip was not a waste of time. If anything, it helped us, especially in the Senate side. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Impeach who? Obama. Obama. Well, I'm in the state legislature, but I tell you what I would like you to help with. Let's repeal the 17th Amendment so that our U.S. Senators would represent the will of the state, and maybe we'd be a lot better off. So, I mean, so, yes, sir, in the back, right there, and then I'll catch up. Well, it's, I'm working on about, right now, and I'm chair of the education committee, but I'm, I'm working on right now what I would call 10 liberty amendments, and one of them is to, to repeal the 17th Amendment, yes. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Mark right. Right. Actually, it came out of that, yes. Go <laughs> figure. Well, it's, it's very... Well, and I'm going to let you know something, folks. I, it's because of groups like you, and, and this is not to change the subject, but don't you th I don't want you to think that these things are not achievable. When we passed the Real ID Bill in, in Pennsylvania, which, which said that Pennsylvania was not going to be part of the U.S. government's uh, Real Identification Bill, which I believe was a real violation of our, of our own state rights scenarios, we got it done because of groups like yourself. So you have had some victories here. I don't want you to think that you're, you're blowing smoke against the wind, because it can get very, believe me, you can get very cynical, and, 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 and I, 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 with myself, so. Yes, sir. 
Well, that's going to be a, I, I don't want to build, I'm from a sales background, I don't want to build you any unexpected expectations. It's going to take, it, these things are, are going to take some, a little time. Uh, and I hate to say it like that because, I, and, and, and I understand if you're cynical and, and, and I, I don't blame you, but, but we've, for a long time we were asleep, folks. For a long time, the American people were asleep. Absolutely. The things that are going on just didn't happen overnight. Yes. This has been an ongoing thing. Sir, you are, you're, you're standing. You're, 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 it's your turn now. Thank you very much. One of the problems is with uh, HB in the house, uh, HB 76, was they came up with a laundry list of problems that yeah. Philadelphia was against this, they would lose 500 million here. The language wasn't true. Right, and they use that as a hell of a hammer to put 76 down. And we came back to try to go to William My question to you is this. Is that going to happen within the Senate? Actually, no, because see, that's why I don't understand. Because we're real, real close. I just got I just got Andy Deniman to sign on the bill, who's down in Chester. And, and, and then I'm, I have a real good coalition talk with, with uh, Senator Shirley Kitchen, who's from Philadelphia, and Senator Deanna Washington, who's also from Philadelphia, and they are really, really close. If we can just tweak it a little bit, we can get their delegation on board, and, and that will put us over the top. That is the question. Are you going to tweak it to bring it up on board? Well, I, the, tweaking, the tweaking I'm talking about is finding if that $3 million exists, that difference. We want to make it revenue neutral. Uh, the bill, see, here's why I didn't understand why the Philadelphia Coalition was against it, because it actually, the way the sales tax was set up for Philadelphia, they were going to get an almost an extra hundred million dollars just local because how, how they're a first class city. And, and their, see, their property tax and so forth aren't separated like the rest of ours are from, from, from their other taxes. So they were actually, they were actually going to make out. I think the biggest, the biggest argument and the reason why they lost on that side of the aisle over there was that the PSEA and the other teachers unions came out against it heavily. And, and I think that has, has had, had that effect on it. Last question. Well, actually, there was some more here. It's not a problem. One more point. Yes. I have heard that the response to fall back and forth that the legislator down in Harrisburg really didn't want a 76 because they wanted to say, well, it's the local school board that made your tax, not us down here in Harrisburg. And that was going back and forth, and they played that silly game of we're caught in the middle. Does that kind of an environment and tone exist within the Senate? Well, here's what and, and, and let me address that real quick, and then we want to get to a couple other questions. I don't want to come off, because if, if you don't mind. Well, we've got about five minutes. All right. Well, real quick on that issue. The argument was this, that you're going to lose local control. Well, I, sir, I'm going to let you know something. As chairman of the State Education Committee, the only thing about local control is that there is no local control. I mean, if, if that's my point. So anybody who says you're going to lose local control, you're not going to lose curriculum. The only thing it's going to do is it's going to eliminate the school board's ability to arbitrarily raise your, your, your property taxes. That's, that's basically it. Yes, sir. Uh, with this uh, bill you're pushing through for uh, equal electoral access yes. help, those who want to run for local offices. Yes. Apply for yes. No, this is this is for anybody. But the difference is in the 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 it, it gets really amplified on statewide. The, 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 it's unbelievable. I mean, you still need more sanctions as an independent third party can for local races, but it, it, it would apply for all races to answer that. Yes, sir. Real quick. There was uh, and I don't know if it's in your bill. There was something about school board members where they would have to uh, run as a uh, and now they can cross file. That's not in my bill. That's not in your bill. That's not my bill. Okay. My bill is very simple. Yes, sir. What's going on with uh, SB 999, the Liberty Preservation Act, uh, to help stop the NDAAPA? Uh, we are actually working. We just met with, it's amazing, but the FOP met with me and they were a little upset. Um, 
I, I wish I, we're working that out. Uh, I got a commitment from the chairman of the uh, uh, intergovernment committee that there, that's where it lies. Yes, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna run the bill. Okay. We just have to, we're just working on, on a couple of things. We'll keep you posted and, right. and we'll keep that online. And ma'am, you had your hand up, and then you, and that'll be the last. When they leave uh, public service, that they get to keep the money that's in their campaign coffers. Is that true? The, the, the pack is set up, and I should be a little more familiar with that because I'm only going to run for one more term and I'm done. Um, but um, uh, I'm going to empty mine out. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go whoever the candidate I'm going to be supporting, I'm going to you know, help with if I have any. I mean, I'm not a big fundraiser. I mean, that makes and they keep on and they keep those going once you set those up they are they do have a life of their own they, they really do so that's why folks in whole in the whole campaign finance reform area I, I I understand it I really really do but this is why folks you need to vet your candidates and you need to know who you're voting for and we got to start picking people with principle and integrity going forward and and, and one last thing, real quick. I just, hey, ma'am, your, your question, go ahead. I'm, I just wanted to ask, on your Bill 195, you mentioned you have resistance, but what kind of support do you have? What is From you mean? folks and, and the other groups, the editorial boards, they love it. I just can't get it moved in, in, inside the, 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 the halls of, of, of Harrisburg. Uh, oh, the editorials. When, when I first came out the bill back in 2007, I never had so many... And it, from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia to all over. It was, it was like, great bill, good idea, the time is now, boom, boom, boom. And, 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 and then I just can't get it going on the state government committee. Uh, it's, it's, and that's where it's, surprise, surprise. we really need help to call your legislators, why aren't you on this bill, that the time is now, and keep it going, so forth. Finally, before I leave, I just want to let you know something. When I talked to you earlier, and I just mentioned about picking your candidates, when I ran, I want to let you know something. I'm not in the pension system. I'm not in the health care system. I return my COLA each month back to the state treasury. I do it not because, not because I'm trying to be a nice guy. I do it because of Article 2, Section 8 of our state constitution, which I took an oath to and actually read. And, and, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I, 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 my point is this. If our state... Here's what we've done, and the reason I'm bringing this up is this. The reason why you form these groups, and the reason why you do this, and you come here on a Friday night and you listen to some of my hot air, is because you're concerned and you're worried. But here's what has happened, folks. We've arbitrarily changed our Constitution, and we were asleep while they were doing it. You see, Article 2, Section 8, of, and the reason I'm bringing this up, Article 2, Section 8 of our state constitution reads the same in our 1894, which I have a copy of, and it came out of our second state constitutional convention. So if our legislators want per diems, if they want to be in the pension system, if they want, we can amend Article 2, Section 8. But if, here's what happens when we don't amend the constitution. The constitution can grow, it can, or it can contract, but it should only grow and contract through the amendment process. And why is that so important? So we, the people, can decide, because we're supposed to be self-governed, correct? But when we arbitrarily change it, what do we do? We take away. We, we